podcasting has grown in popularity in the past few years, but it raised issue as to how one can be certain that advertiser are getting accurate metrics and also how creators prove their value. The Interactive Advertising Bureau created a certification program meant to have a standard podcast measurement. Let's dive into this podcast measurement and download and how important is this to a podcaster and advertisers. But first, let's take a step back. It's 2005. Welcome to our World, Worldwide Developers Conference 2005. And Apple has just included podcasts in iTunes. And we recently announced something new for iTunes and iPod. This is a Steve job, by the way. Uh, as you know, the podcasting the phenomenon CEO is exploding of right now. And uh, podcasting, of course, is a concatenation of iPod and broadcasting. And what is podcasting? You know, it's been described a lot of different ways. Um, one way has been uh, TiVo for radio. You can download radio shows and listen to them on your computer or put them on your iPod anytime you want. So it's just like television programs on TiVo. And that's true. Another way it's been described is Wayne's World for radio, um, <laughs> which means that anyone uh, without much capital investment can make a podcast put it on a server and get a worldwide audience for their radio show. And that's true too. Um, we see it as the hottest thing going in radio, hotter than anything else in radio. And as you know, what podcasting is, is that you can not only download radio shows and listen to them, you can subscribe to them. So that every time there's a new episode, it automatically gets downloaded to your computer. You can listen to it there, or it automatically gets synced to your iPod the next time you dock your iPod. So it's very, very exciting. And the medium was born. Then today, podcast audiences represent a growing segment of effective marketable media. Podcast ad revenues are expected to reach over $4 billion by 2025, more than double poster revenue in 2022. This is according to the IAB Podcast Advertising Revenue Study conducted by PwC US and posted on May 2023. Wow, that's a lot of revenue. The question is, what is the purpose of certification and how this all started? Um, just a little history. Um, in this is podcast Hall of Fame inductee and Blueberry CEO called the Association for Cochrane. Downloadable Media. And we kind of came up with a spec. Matter of fact, my prior CEO, Angelo Mendato, wrote uh, the eight pages or so of that spec. And then it was really this loose adoption. It was Libsyn, Podbean, and Blueberry, and a, a few others. And then if we move forward a number of years, and again, I don't even know the year we started the IEB. Well, the IEB um, started to look at forming a certification. We weren't part of the IEB at the time when the conversation started. But we felt like we needed to be part of that discussion from what we were hearing. And it was a good thing that we joined, uh, Libsyn, Podbean, the three of us kind of joined almost at the same moment. Well, during that time, Todd said that it just didn't have a lot of science behind it. So there was some time spent really negotiating out of the specification and they submitted some documents to form this prior to the association. And, um, you know, fast forward to here a number of years and the, the IB certification has grown to be a, a pretty robust process. We've been through it a number of times. Matter of fact, we're going to start our recertification this summer, um, uh, for the new spec. But really, and ultimately, this the spec isn't the, the update's not a huge change. Um, it's incremental, trying to close a, a few loop, loopholes. Um, you know, there's there's a, a different stock out there that kind of explains it. But I think the thing to keep in mind on the IB specification in the certification process, while many want it to be tighter where AKA numbers from Blueberry and Libsyn and Podbean and all the other players are within, you know, a percentage or two from each other. 
which in reality they could be, but what we're looking at and what I always often tell folks is, at least from Blueberry's perspective, the IB certification is the minimum, so the minimum that you need to qualify and quantify what is currently a download. It's the minimum. Well, we try to coordinate with the IAB. We even email the PR department or the PR company who handle an IAB to discuss about the IAB certification. Unfortunately, until now, we haven't replied to our email. This is what IAB certification based on their website. The stakes for revenue in podcasting are growing, and the need to attract buyers will become more competitive over time. To foster a fair market for podcast businesses, IAB Tech Lab and the Podcast Technical Measurement Working Group developed and maintains guidelines for metrics used in podcasting. Measuring performance in podcast advertising is unique in the market of digital advertising. Podcast episodes are downloaded for consumption and measurement is based on server logs. This is in contrast to other digital mediums that typically maintain an open connection between a consumer's device and the content server. This nuance produces different metrics in podcast advertising. The challenge for podcast producers and distributors is to offer buyers a set of metrics that is consistently defined and measured equally across the podcast medium. This document provides an overview of ad delivery and podcasting and describes the technical process for measuring downloads, audience, and ad delivery. IAB Tech Lab also offers a compliance program for companies who wish to signal to buyers their adherence to these guidelines. With a consistent set of podcast advertising metrics, buyers and sellers can engage in a conversation about campaign strategy with confidence. Podcasters should be aware that if the specification get tighter, more download will be removed. I think this will be the next thing the next version, according to Todd. If we want a super strict, super tight spec and based upon really the nature of podcasting and how we have so little insight into what happens after the media is downloaded, we could really tighten things up tighter where the numbers would go down. Now, let's think about what advantages other players in space have. Um, Apple, Spotify, uh, they they see the client side data. They have the data that is the dream data. What we all want to know. What you know, we did someone listen for thirty seconds, or did they listen for the whole episode? You know, that is data that is very very valuable. But they are never going to give us that information back. Um, and because they won't give the client side data back, because the nature of podcasting, whether it is streamed which some services are doing, or downloaded, um, or progressively downloaded, the there's only a certain amount of data you're still going to see. Now, those that want to go to streaming, they want to abolish the download. They only want uh, a person to be able to get the episode when they actively hit play with a with an internet connection. Now, where I live in Michigan, uh, you know, I, I live in a one bar area where the connectivity is not good. So I rely on the ability to be able to download episodes into my phone and have them available for me on the go. Now, when I get in better reception areas, that's not the issue. But the beauty of podcasting has always been is that we've been able to take this media with us no matter where we are. Now, the number of folks that are downloading today are fewer than those that are streaming today. Uh, and, and, you know, to the listener, it, it's you know, they plush play, right? <laughs> and it, it plays and that's all that matters. The technology delivering it uh, could be an active stream. It could be progressive download. Um, I'm still in big favor of the download. And then what we do on the other side is then we, is, and the advertisers haven't complained about this. Uh, some say that they want more data, but again, okay, be careful what you wish for. We go to a streaming uh, model, what happens if 20% of those folks aren't really listening? <laughs> um, okay. I, you know, I'm willing to take the hit. Uh, I've always said, I don't care what the number is as long as I know what the number is, uh, but it might be a hard pill to swell, swallow for all those folks that 
and really, and to be honest with you, the, the, the importance of the certification is only important to those that are monetizing. If you are not monetizing, you could probably care, care less about the, the certification. Um, so the value of the certification today is strictly for those that are, you know, doing advertising in their shows and want to be able to report this upstream to a, to an advertiser. It does not discount the conversation you still have to have and say, well, we don't know how many people have actually listened. So, you know, the change in the spec, um, I didn't participate heavily this round. I reviewed the changes, didn't see anything there was outwardly wowza. Uh, there was a few things that got struck because we said, no, uh, the space is not ready for this. And I know there's been controversy around the IEB certification, but I'm going to tell you, it's a lot better than the way it was before where everyone was just kind of doing their own thing. I do wish that the numbers were closer from host to host, from service to service though. Wow. It was a wild west. Everyone has their own way of measuring, listening, download, ad impression. Well, it was a chaos. You know, I, I, here's the thing. The certification is never, ca um, never really dealt with fraud. Um, but let me, you know, there again, history in the early days, well, there's a lot of fraud. You know, everyone was trying to pump the numbers. And we built a fraud detection system that really, you know, when you're looking at a widespread of data, <laughs> you know, and you're looking at, you know, 300 million downloads a month, you can see fraud very easy. It sticks out like a sore thumb because the pattern is very, very obvious. Or if a show's traveling along in a certain trajectory and all of a sudden, it, you know, you see this spike and then, you know, it goes for a month and then spike drops. You go, hmm, where, where, did, where did that spike come from? You can see this, this activity. And um, so we built heavily into fraud prevention early on. And for many years, believe it or not, it wasn't an issue. I mean, we probably went... In the early days, it was. And then for like 10 years, it wasn't an issue. And now, all of a sudden, it's peeking its head up again. Uh, we see people doing tactics of buying a campaign of downloads. And, you know, we see, you just see it. It's, it's not, you know, it's like the, you know, and again, only if you're doing advertising. If someone's buying downloads, <laughs> to be frank with you, and they're not doing advertising, I don't care. If their ego can't handle the numbers that they're actually doing and need that ego boost, you know, it's just, it's all false traffic. Where the where it becomes an issue is that actually it's tied around an advertising campaign. And Rob Walsh and other folks that I know, we all have a joke kind of off the side. Yeah, yeah, we see this show come on a campaign and they've been doing a certain trajectory of their show and all of a sudden there's this big bump. Well, where did that come from? And, you know, we look at it and, yeah, we, we wipe that off the board. These days, a lot of agency offering podcast promotion or campaigns. Sometimes they'll message you on Facebook or LinkedIn with big downloads or promotion offer. Even big companies are offering that as well. I reach out to June Group who offering podcast promotion on their website. But they never respond to my interview requests. I think people are always going to try to find loopholes um, that try to, to game the system. And I, what I would suspect, and again, we'll see what happens over the next, you know, six or nine months, but I would suspect that fraud prevention detection will be uh, a deeper part of the next spec. But then again, what do you do to make everyone work the same. My fraud system, I, I invested heavily in it. Um, I built my own system. I don't need to prescribe to a third party fraud detection system. It's gonna cost me money uh, to do that. I shouldn't be forced to run with a specific company for fraud prevention. So it's gonna be very, very hard for the IEB to put in place in the certification um, Fraud, fraud, maybe there's going to be fraud protection guidelines, but then again, how do you specify fraud? And if you do specify all the fraud, then the people that are creating the fraud are just going to read the spec and say, okay, we can't do this no more because we're going to get caught. We have to do something different. 
And most of the fraud today is pretty unsophisticated. So um, if we're catching it already, do I need to build a deeper mousetrap that those that are committing fraud are going to be able to say, okay, we have to change our tactic to something that's a little more sophisticated. And then, you know, do they build something where we can't detect the fraud? Um, it's pretty obvious when something's happening. So, and I, you know, there's, there's ways, if you work hard enough at something to cheat, you can, but in the end, the podcasters really only hurt themselves. Do you think that he has to have included about anti-fraud or fraud detection and all the hosting platforms should have one point of focus, detect this fraud that's happening in, in our industry? I will say that if I see a podcaster that has been prevent uh, doing fraud um, and I call them out on that, uh, usually that's a self um, self fixing solution. You, you know, you just say, hey, I want to have a call about your numbers. Um, get them on the phone and say, hey, it looks like there's some, you know, and basically paid promotion. That's how I say it. I don't say it's fraud. It looks like you're doing some paid promotion here. Um, and, you know, this is this is the effect. Uh, you paid for promotion for two weeks and your numbers come back to normal and the audience didn't sustain. So we're going to wipe that two weeks off the board. And you're not going to get paid for that. And that is this, that's the conversation that really changes behavior. Now, if that content creator leaves uh, and goes somewhere else and hosting with this, we often see where they go. Um, we're all friends in the marketplace. Um, you know, even though we compete with one another. Um, so I'm, I'm not saying I'm going to give uh, someone a call and say, hey, you know, if this person's running ad campaigns on you, but you know it's one of those situations where you know we're all aware of what's of each other and things that are going on um usually most of the platforms have some fraud prediction and, the, and they look for it so again i think defining it in the spec is going to i, I i'm not going to reveal how, and again and, and, and well, i did just a little bit I revealed number one, I'm looking at a spectrum of data and I see this spike on a specific show or specific episode. Um, and it looks like that spike isn't been sustained. You know, shows have one off shows have one off or good runs, you know, and, and because a show has a spike does not necessarily mean that that particular episode was bought traffic. But there's usually other indicators and those indicators I'll go look for. What, where did that traffic come from? Did it come from a, an article on Forbes or CNN or did, you know, there was something that triggered um, that traffic. Uh, does, is that particular um, podcast episode tracking well in Google? I'll go and Google search the episode and see if it's, if it's made into a snippet or something to, to try to explain away where that traffic came from. But that's usually only happens on one off episodes. It doesn't help. It doesn't, you, you don't see this, you know, person's doing 5,000 downloads per episode and all of a sudden they jump to 15,000 and then that lasts for a month or three day spikes, three day spike, three day spike, three day spike. And then at the end it's gone and they're back down to 5,000. That to me is pretty evident that they're doing something. And then there's other stuff too that triggers our system where I get a flag message that says, go, go look at this. This is crazy. Buying downloads for your podcast. That's going to be interesting how we can prevent and this. I don't know. I, I, I guess it's going to be up to the committee to decide if they want to put some specs in. I, I, again, I think it's going to be challenging to say, okay, everyone has to use XYZ company to do fraud prevention. Well, I'm not, I don't want to incur costs that I don't need to if it's not a problem for my customers. Thank you for that. So you don't think that there should be like a one, say one organization just to have, we, we, sh we should check this, resolve this for, yeah, for our I, podcaster. I, you know, to, 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 to tell a company who they have to use for fraud prevention, you know, that's, that's king making. And I, I don't think the IB has the power to do that. 
and or would do that. I don't I don't think companies would would agree to it. I just don't think they would. I think that will be a big issue. It would be a great to have a central committee that tackles fraud in podcasting, especially since podcasting ads are getting larger. We asked a few big names in podcasting about the certification and Libsyn sent us a reply, read by a voice actor. At Libsyn, we've always prioritized accurate and reliable measurement for our podcasters and advertisers. Today, we're thrilled to announce that Libsyn is now fully certified under the IAB 2.1 standards. This certification, defined by the Interactive Advertising Bureau, IAB, is the industry benchmark for podcast download filtering and measurement. Our focus on expanding our advertising business, enhancing tools for creators and advertisers to drive monetization, and increasing our global reach underscores our commitment to the podcasting community. This IAB 2.1 certification marks a significant milestone in our journey. It not only highlights our dedication to maintaining the highest measurement standards, but also reinforces our role as a trusted partner in the podcasting industry. As a leading podcast hosting and advertising company, Libsyn has made substantial investments in platform innovations, delivering unmatched specialist expertise, access to sought-after inventory, advanced targeting, and outcome-based measurement capabilities, along with access to brand safety and suitability tools. So we got a reply from ACAS Chief Product Officer Matt Donald about our question on certification. This is what he said, read by a voice actor. Measuring performance in podcast advertising is unique compared to other digital mediums because of the consumption patterns of individual listeners, delivery methods, and the intimate nature of podcasts. This all makes it necessary to take a different approach to measuring EP performance compared to other digital advertising mediums. For example, many audiences download podcast episodes for offline listening. This makes tracking the immediate engagement for advertisers very difficult. This also differs greatly from other forms of media buying, like web-based ads, where impressions and clicks can be measured instantly. Podcasts, and therefore the ads within them, are consumed asynchronously. When we ask about their anti-fraud protection, and this is what they say. ACAST follows IAB-certified methods of calculating listens and downloads. A listen or a download is valid according to the IAB if it meets the following criteria. Minimum download. At least 60 seconds of the episode was downloaded. User agent filter. A cast uses the IAB ABC International Spider and Bots list to remove invalid user agents. IP address filter. A cast uses the tag data center IP list to remove non-human traffic. 24 hour window. Only count one listen per listener per episode. At a cast, ad impressions are counted if they occur on valid downloads or if the ad is within the request. Meanwhile, Senior Vice President of Measurement and Products and Strategy at Triton Digital, Darrell Battaglia, said, Measuring performance in podcast advertising is different because the majority of podcast listening is through third-party platforms like Apple Podcasts and Spotify, which are not controlled by the publisher. As a result, publishers do not have information about registered listeners to help identify those listeners. We primarily have to work with IP address and user agent as our key identifiers for podcast listeners. Despite the challenges with connecting ad exposure to outcomes like visitation to the brand's website, podcast advertising has been proven to work very well at achieving results over and over again. It can be measured well enough to demonstrate that podcast advertising works. Podcast measurement technical guidelines are very important to provide credibility to the podcast industry. Podcast measurements come a long way. There are now measurement guidelines and an audit and certification process. Numbers produced from one company to the next are now similar in the approach they deploy and the results. We have unified agreement as to how a download is defined. The work of the participants of the IAB Tech Lab Committee is a big reason for that. That work is ongoing and involves people from many companies in the podcast space. As other podcasting hosts, Triton also confirmed that they also have an anti-fraud policy. 
Yes, we have an anti-fraud strategy. First, we use the known data center and international bots and spider lists from TAG, the Trustworthy Accountability Group, and the IAB. We also have a data science team that uses machine learning to detect anomalies in the data and researches them to determine additional sources of machine traffic or to confirm that IP addresses that look like machine traffic are actually legitimate. And for our public ranker reports, we have a team that manually analyzes and reviews sizable spikes and declines in download numbers. Hmm. So how would you know if a certain podcaster have some promotion or campaign? Anything that drives a listen through some method. Okay, let's say I'm going to run an ad on some major media site. That's fine. Run the ad, but run a preview of this show. Run, run, run a 30 second clip. This is a preview of this podcast. And if you want to subscribe to it, click through to subscribe. Um, anything that is built into an ad campaign that does a direct play against episodes, that to me is suspicious or gamifying it. You know, there's people that are, you know, buy, get tokens for playing uh, 60 seconds of this clip. Well, that's an obvious attempt to basically boost downloads. And there were some other folks that were guilty of this. There were some big articles about this uh, last year and this year. So I think these activities, um, when they're reported, I think the advertiser should take notice and go back and say, hey, we need to have a conversation about you know, this campaign that we ran with you during this time period. Um, you know, I, I don't know. It, to me, everyone's going to try, everyone's goal is revenue, but at the expense of defrauding advertisers, that to me just, it, it goes completely the wrong way. This makes no sense. You are just cheating yourself and could ruin your reputation if you do. A word of advice from Todd, if they're not participating in advertising deals, do whatever you want to do. <laughs> <laughs> That's simple. <laughs> you know. But if they're doing um, if doing advertising to get sponsor, you know. If, but if if you're if you're doing normal advertising, okay. And again, this is if you're promoting your show, and which we all do, you know, do it in a responsible way that isn't going to incur um, this boost of a specific episode again. You know, market your show. Uh, if you market an episode, make sure there is that they have to do a, an action. Doesn't require an autoplay. Um, doesn't invoke uh, some gamification where people are being rewarded for it. You know, just use standard traditional advertising to to grow your show. Um, I, I I think the thing I just want to tell people that are trying to buy downloads, it's not growing your audience. Those are not real people. You know, who are you fooling? You're fooling yourself. So growing a show is a challenge. We all have, I, you know, I've been doing a show for October, we 20 years. I go through the same, I wish my show was bigger. Of course I wish it was bigger. But again, I think it goes back to fundamentals and and putting together good titles, good show notes, doing promotion social where your tribe is hanging out. You know, that's all work. Podcasting is work. There's no shortcut. Um, again, uh, I think you'll be disappointed if you go out and do an advertising. If you buy, if you do an advertising campaign and you get this immediate growth and when advertising campaign ends, your show is still doing the same, um, you probably have wasted your money. Uh, I, you know, I think you have to be very, very careful. And especially if it's tied to advertising, you need to disclose that to your advertiser and disclose that to your host. Uh, they will probably advise you that you shouldn't be doing that because if you're caught, um, I have a naughty list and if a show makes it on the naughty list, then they don't get presented ad deals because what have they done? They've hurt my reputation. They've caused um, performance issues on advertising campaigns. 
this is where I've always, again, been this advocate. I don't care what the number is as long as I know what the number is. And again, I believe in tighter, uh, tighter um, qualifications because in the end, what it does is when you deliver, truly deliver an, an ad campaign and you do performance for that campaign, not doing anything to promote it, guess what? That advertiser is going to come back and renew and spend more money with you. Um, you might have a one month fun run and make a bunch of cash, but behind the scenes that advertiser saying he's got a list of shows and he's backing that performance back out show by show by show. And he's going to see that your show underperformed. You're not going to get renewed. So short time gains, uh, can mean long-term losses. And once you go on a list and you're not trusted anymore, it's really, really hard to regain trust. Okay. Okay. That's not good for a podcaster. Anyway, let's go back to this controversy happening on this certification 2.2. If you remember on May 29th, Brian Barletta wrote an in-depth article about Spotify not to recertify megaphone or chartable which is now part of spotify ad analytics to the iab podcast certification and this is what mr berletta said on on his podcast and it's also unwritten in the article under sound profitable it is unlikely that recertification would uncover any form of massive discrepancy at megaphone and choosing not to recertify does not imply an active choice to deviate from the spec, but it does break the unspoken rule. The governed terms download and ad delivered, not ad impressions, are data points that our industry has spent a decade building and defending. They aren't perfect, but we've refined them pretty well. And performance marketers have run them through the ringer and shown our entire industry that they are strong indicators that podcast advertising works. It is a proxy measure that we have all agreed to because we will likely never get actual granular client-side listening data back or true client-side ad impression counting universally. After this hard-hitting article, a couple of days, Spotify changed their mind and they saying Megaphone is working to get IAB certified again. But I'm not sure what happened to Chartable. It's unclear why they left earlier this year. Perhaps there was some blowback. I asked Todd about this. What do you think about Spotify? Earlier, they said they wouldn't recertify the megaphone. But after Brian from Sound Profitable wrote um, a hard-hitting article, then Spotify said they're going to recertify the megaphone. Oh, do you have any comment on that? You can. You I, can I, my, my suspicion is their partners said... Their customers probably said, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, I, I, what, whatever Brian wrote, I'm sure added to the awareness, but I would suspect, and I haven't heard anything through the grapevine, but I would suspect that their podcasters said, w w wait a minute, what are you doing? We're telling our advertisers that were IB certified and now we're not going to be here putting us at a competitive disadvantage. So I think that is probably what, what drove, um, I would suspect that's what drove the change. We want to be on podcasting to be like everything have like yeah, certain. We all, we all want to be on the same playing field. And I think Spotify thought, well, we're, we've got all this data. We don't need that. And then they realize, well, you know, Podcasting is more than Spotify. And uh, their customers said, hey, we're distributed everywhere. You can't do this. So that would be my suspicion on what happened. But they're not recertifying Chartable. So that tells you something too. Yeah. So why Chartable? Not yeah. only Megaphone. Yeah. Good, good question. Okay. And, and you know, their pod sites uh, piece, if it, you know, I don't know if that got rolled into megaphone, but you know, who knows? Yeah. And also yeah. I suspect the membership fee for the IB was a very big number 
and the recertification number is a very low number, you know, compared to anything else that they're doing. So that check that they had to write for that recertification was probably pretty low, or you know, as compared to their membership fee. And I asked a couple of industry experts, so I asked Triton Digital. We believe that anyone producing measurement metrics should be certified. It benefits podcasting overall when there's consistency in how podcast content and advertising is measured across the industry. The IAB Podcast Measurement Certification 2.1 is based on which the podcast industry can rest its trust. Not only does it unify measurement procedures, but it also brings rigidity and transparency into the process. Hence, beneficially for all users, listeners, advertisers, and creators. This will have advertisers get assurance about the matrix they get regarding listeners, downloads, and other such details, those encouraging more investment into the medium and gain trust. Second, it's provide an exact measure by which content creators can measure the impact and reach of their work opening new routes toward revenue. Last but not the least, because creators and advertisers are encouraged to create interesting and pertinent content, listeners benefit from an overall improvement in podcast quality. AIB Podcast Certification 2.1 is of imperative value for integrity, growth, and long-term sustainability in an industry that is rapidly expanding and growing, all part of the podcast ecosystem. A big thank you to Todd from Blueberry. Thank you to Brian from Sound Profitable, Triton Digital Daryl Batalagia, Senior Vice President of Measurement, Product and Strategy, ACAS Chief Product Officer Matt McDonald's, this podcast is produced by Kangaroo Firm Media Lab in cooperation with Podwires.com. Written and hosted by me, Vico Santos. Music courtesy by Soundstrip. And this is The Disclaimer. <laughs>